the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? And be glad in it. Because you have a choice. Everyone say, I have the power to choose. I choose life and not death. You know, one of the things that God, there's an area of connection when you carry the reverence of God. The reverence of God. That is called the fear of the Lord. Amen? In the fear of the Lord, there's reverence, honor, and respect. Now, we gather together, amen, to worship the Lord. If you don't come here to worship the Lord, please don't come. It's real simple. Don't bring your phones in here and get on the phone. And don't sleep in here or you'll get thrown out. It's that simple. This is the house of God. If you're not going to respect his presence in his house, get out. It's that simple. Amen? We want his presence and his glory. And I don't want any antichrist spirit to come in here and interfere. Or religious spirit. Amen? This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice. If you ain't got a heart after God, if you can't come in here and open your mouth and praise God, then you need to go eat more dirt until you can. Until you can get a humble heart because you are pride, there's pride and arrogance. Knowledge puffs you up. The Word of God humbles you. Amen? This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice in his presence. We come together to honor him. Amen? That's what it's about. And what we do, we open a port. There's a portal that opens that comes. And we want to be in unity of that. Amen? If you're not in unity, then you're in disorder. That means you're in disorder, your mind is in disorder, and your house is in disorder. And God wants to bring things in divine order. That's what's happening right now. There's an... <clears throat> an urgency <clears throat> and everything that God is doing. A tremendous urgency. He's trying to get people in position. Why? Because they're going to miss what's getting ready to happen. They're going to miss it. Because they're still caught up in themselves. God is not number one in their life. Amen? God is not number one. Until God becomes number one and you stop chasing the things of the world. Things aren't going to change in you. David was a man who made many mistakes, but there was one thing. He was after God's heart. And you know what? He used to hang out right where the presence of God was. Man, when they brought the ark, the ark of the covenant, when they would carry it, he would go after. He would get in there. He would defile all the rules and regulations of the priests. And they didn't understand why he didn't die. He didn't die because he was a man after God's heart. The other ones are all ritualistic. He would get in God's presence, even when he blew it. And when he was hungry, he went and stole their, their bread. And God let him. But they would freak out. But he was a man after God's heart, and this is what God is looking for. Listen, what you have now, if you don't get in position soon, you're going to lose it anyways. You're going to lose it. Because there's a great event getting ready to happen. A great event. We are in the beginning of a new era. We have just come through the most powerful, besides the original, Passover. We have crossed over now. We're in it. We're in that time right now. We are in that season right now where God is putting things in divine order and preparation for his return. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrew. Glory. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. Does anybody believe the word of God? 
good. You know, the word says the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. Why will the letter kill? Because you don't obey it. Eventually, it will come against you. You'll be judged by the word. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. God who is at various times, at what? Various times. And in various ways spoken time past to the fathers by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. Through whom also he made the worlds. Who be in the brightness of his glory and expressive image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, and having become so much better than the angels, as he has been inher by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than thee. In other words, various times, times past he talks about. So there's present, eternal, and acceptable times. We talked about that already. Amen? We're talking about a voice of reality to set in order what we call a prophetic moment, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go a little further. Verse 5. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be my son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of all the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness and is a scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. Remember, salvation is in, was brought by an acceptable time. We talked about acceptable times. Acceptable times are God's visitations or interventions into this realm. It's called an acceptable time. Amen? So we see that something is happening right now. We see that the voice of reality, God's voice, is to set in order what we call a prophetic moment. It is in an acceptable time. It's a gathering of prophetic words, visions, dreams that have been released to create a prophetic moment. These are gatherings of things. In other words, we've heard of prophecies. We've heard of all kinds of things. We've heard of people saying whatever. We've heard the word of prophetic. Now they've all gathered together to bring in a prophetic moment at an acceptable time. Is everybody with me? Anybody with me? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I'll say it again. It's a gathering of prophetic words, dreams, visions. That they come together at an acceptable time. They were released to create a prophetic moment. And this release is in the temporary realm, or we call the present time. And it comes from the eternal realm. Amen? The heavenly realm. It's to bring perfect divine order in which heaven and earth align itself. Is everybody okay? Now we have personal prophetic moments and dreams and visions and events and trials. It's to get our attention. Amen? It's to redirect or put things in divine order in our life, something you might be waiting for. There are personal prophetic moments. 
But then there are global moments. What God is doing globally. And these are prophetic moments. And 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. You need a Bible? Get him a Bible. Thank you. And you can't sit in the front row seat without a Bible in your hand, bro. It ain't happening here. This is training for reigning. Amen? Training for reigning. And I can guarantee you, you ain't going to remember it all. Second Chronicles chapter 20. That's why pen, writing, paper doesn't forget. That's why you have a Bible. It was written in there. You know that? Think about it. So as you glean the gathering of God's word and a prophetic moment of his word, you're able to write it down. It brings nuggets. It brings connection. It brings encouragement. It brings refreshing not refleshing, but you got to be careful because it can puff you up. That's where you got to have the Holy Spirit. He loves to beat down our pride. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 13. Now, I want you to know that this King Jehoshaphat was in trouble. He was being attacked on every side. There's no way he can win this battle. He was totally outnumbered. In verse 13. Now it says, now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeroel, the son of Manah, and a Levite of the sons of Ashphat in the midst of the assembly. So the, the Holy Spirit came upon an individual. Now that may happen when we're all gathered together and somebody stands up with a tongue. The Holy Spirit may come upon them and they have a tongue, which when that tongue is released... It's a prophetic word for that fellowship at that time. Many times people don't realize it, that when we're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit will give me the prophetic word for what's happening. It will be released. But it's available to anyone. But make sure it's the Holy Spirit, because I'll tell you to sit down. Amen? We don't need no familiar spirits releasing a word in here. Glory. All right, let's go a little further. In verse 15, and he said, listen to all of you Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. Everyone say, I am from the tribe of Judah. You are from the tribe of Judah now. We are the tribe of Judah. People don't understand it. I'll be standing in line to check out someone, somebody come up to me, are you Indian? What tribe are you from? I'll tell them Judah. They don't get it. Okay. You never heard of the tribe of Judah? Let me tell you about the tribe of Judah. Praise God. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's God's. Tomorrow will go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Now, that's pretty incredible. But they got to cooperate in this battle. He says, position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. And do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. That's called humility. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That's called worship. They were singing. They were, bow they were humble. Let me tell you, God does not answer pride. He rejects it. But he looks for someone who's willing to worship him in truth and in spirit. Other than that, we just become religious. Knowing God's word and not able to do anything with it. Verse 19. Then the Levites of the children 
of the Koranites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with loud voices and high. I hate when people tell me, let's take a moment of silence. For what? It's no time to be silent. We need to release. Silence doesn't release. Amen? Only your words release. They better be his words, though. Amen? So he sees something phenomenal is going on here. He's saying, look at man. The battle's not yours. You need to position yourself. And you need to praise God with loud voices and high. Verse 20. So they rose in the, early in the morning, went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So if he says, believe in the Lord your God, he's saying, believe in his word, believe what he says, amen, and believe who he sends. And you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, the words that come from the prophets, and you shall prosper. Anybody want to be established and prosper? If you don't, you're an idiot. You got to be plumb nuts. I heard somebody one day on TV saying, I've taken a vow of poverty. I said, what a moron. Who would take a vow of poverty? What kind of witness is that to be a Christian? I'm telling we are entering a new realm of Christianity. I'm telling you. Oh, happy days. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were singing, come on, they went out before the army. Why? Because they were God's army. And praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Man, they're praising and worshiping God. The music is going up. Now when they began, in verse 22, to sing and to praise the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Oman, Moab, Mount Syrah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And he's going to tell you how they were defeated. For the people of Oman and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Syrah to utterly kill and destroy them. So when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syrah, they helped to destroy one another. They killed each other. God brought confusion in enemy's camp. They don't even know who they were stabbing. They were cutting, slicing, and dicing. And it wasn't God's people. They were destroying themselves because God released confusion in the enemy's camp. Do you understand when you praise and worship God, he's releasing, ambushing your own enemies. If you're not a worshiper, that won't happen. And remember, the Father seeks those who will worship him in true spirit and power. The enemy fears worshipers because he knows they can easily deceive one who's not. Verse 24. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. Man, you want vengeance on your enemies? Praise God. Worship the Lord. When Jehoshaphat and, and his people came to take away their spoil, hello, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stri stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Hello. What did he say? Believe in the Lord, you'll establish. Believe in the word that comes forth, his prophets, and you will prosper. Did, they, did this group believe in the Lord? Yes. What happened? God defeated their enemies, and they took their spoil for three days. Can you imagine? Think about this. Three days, all of these people carrying their spoil. I don't think it was a few bucks. You're talking millions and millions of dollars in precious gold and silver and jewels that they took away three days 
Can you imagine going to a bank and hauling it for three days? What would you get out of it? Don't imagine it too much. In there. I mean, you can only carry so much gold. You have to go back for more. Amen? Stuff's heavy. We see here that this was an acceptable time, a divine intervention. It created a prophetic moment to the will of heaven on earth, and it's established a divine order. God was moving back the powers of darkness to help his people. Cooperation is a way of warfare. This is how you restrain the enemy, driving them out of their positions. What that does is when you begin to drive out your enemy, it unmasks them. Confusion was released in the enemies. They destroyed each other. The wealth of the wicked was transferred to the righteous. Divine order results in a time of rest and peace. Prosperity and establishment. Is everybody okay? Why? Because it was a prophetic moment. It was a prophetic moment. Prophetic moments come at an acceptable time. Deuteronomy 9. Deuteronomy 9. <clears throat> oh, happy days. Prophetic moments. Glory. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1, Deuteronomy 9, verse 1, is everybody there? Here, O Israel, you are to what? Cross over the Jordan today. Everyone say, I've crossed over. We've crossed over now. The body's crossed over. And go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself. Cities great and fortified up to heaven. A people great and tall, the descendants of Anakim. Now, these are giants, Anaki giants, Goliath and so forth. These are giants that were there. So the Lord crossed them over. You know, he did the same thing when he moved them out of uh, the wilderness. He crossed them over. And where did he send them? He said, I'm sending you to a milk, a place of milk and honey. It's awesome, but you've got to remove the giants. There's always a challenge. Why? Because without challenges, there's no advancement. You will go through stuff to advance. Has everybody got it? A people great and tall, the descendants of the Anakim, whom you know and whom you heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak. Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you, so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said to you. Do not think in your heart after the Lord your God has cast them out before you, saying, because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me into the possess this land. He said, no. But it's because of the wickedness in these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you. It is not because of your righteousness or uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God drives them out before you, and that he may fulfill the word which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God has not given you this good land to possess because of your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. Hello. That's called rebellious doing your own will. Amen? So we see we have come to a crossover. In other words, this last Passover was a crossover. It was in a pre-appointed, acceptable time to establish a prophetic moment. 
Hallelujah. Is to unmask the enemies of God, expose their agenda, and dismantle their positional seats of authority. And whose responsibility to drive them out? Ours. Are you driving them out or are you still asking for that Mercedes? Hallelujah. This will manifest his divine order from heaven. These are prophetic moments. They come within an acceptable time of God's intervention. It's gathered together all things that were spoken, all things that were prophesied, all things that were foreseen to happen comes together in a moment. Joel chapter 3. Personally, I prefer Lamborghini. <laughs> That's going to have climb aboard and praise the Lord. On the back, I'll say, come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, don't be so religious on me today now. Loosen up. We're in a war. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. When God talks about the righteous, he's talking about a remnant. It's a remnant. See, God has remnants. He always has remnants. And when the body of Christ is left, there'll be remnants behind. In fact, we'll have the two witnesses that will be with us. We'll go home with them. And then you'll have the 144,000 there will be witnesses all over the world that will be remnants also. But there will be remnants left that will get back in order when they realize they just missed the bus out. That's going to change their lives. Snap. What was I doing wrong? Was it the girl I was leave, living with? Was it the drugs I was using? Was it the alcohol? Was it the greed? Was it maybe I never tithed? Maybe all of those things. Maybe I... Just obedient to God's word will leave you behind. Does everybody get it? Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the Je uh, valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them on account of my people, my heritage, Israel. Whom they have scattered among the nations, are they still scattered? Yes. They have also divided up my spoil, and they have cast lots for my people. They have given a boy as a payment for a harlot. Hello. And sold a girl for wine that they may drink. This is what's happening right now. That's why they're abducting children. They're using them for money. Indeed, what have you to do with me? O Tyre and Sidon and all the coast of Philistines, you will, will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried, in, carried into your temples my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Greeks, that you may remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them, and I will return your retaliation on your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of my people, Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations and prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Is God doing that right now? Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, and assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come. 
go down for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, and their wickedness is great. Is that happening right now? We've never seen so much wickedness be exposed in our lives. Verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of what? Decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark. The stars and the will diminish their brightness. The Lord will also roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake, but the Lord will be the shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. You shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and no alien shall ever pass through it again. It will come to pass in that day, and the mountains will drip with new wine, the hills shall flow with milk, and the brooks of Judah shall be flooded with water. The fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord and water all of Valley of Acacia. Egypt shall be a desolation and a dam, an isolated wilderness. Because of the violence against the people of Judah, for they have shed innocent blood in their land. That's called abortion. And Judah shall abide forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will acquit them of the guilt of bloodshed whom I have not acquitted. For the Lord dwells in Zion. Valley of decision for all humanity. God is offering immunity to those willing to serve, surrender, and follow. Because we are entering a new era. He's offering immunity, in other words, forgiveness, to anyone willing to come to him these days. But how long will that last? We don't know. In Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Prophetic moment. We are in a prophetic moment with prophetic moments. Things are being released. Things are being unfolded. Portals are opening. Heaven's invading the earth. And we're a part of it. Hi, Ma. I didn't see you here. You must have been stealth. Hallelujah, verse 7, uh, something. 15. Verse 15. Hallelujah. Daniel 7, 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to the one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all these so he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts were of four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. In other words, he was talking to the angel of the Lord. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. That is the end result. And he says, then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast. The word beast here is associated with a fallen angel. Okay? He's a king of his territory or kingdom. There are many beasts that have regimes or kingdoms. And he wanted to know what the fourth beast meant. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with his teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured both and broke in pieces and trampled the residue with his feet. And the ten horns that were on his head, and the other horn which came up before, which were three fell, namely that the horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them, until the Ancient of, of Days, who was Jesus, came, and a judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. 
Then he said the fourth piece. Now, that was the conclusion. So he kind of gave him the conclusion, conclusion ahead of time. He said, now this is what's going to happen. He said, then the fourth piece shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from the other all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from his, this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. Then he will be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times in laws, its constitution and bill of rights. Are we seeing that happen now? These beasts are already influenced. You've got to remember that the, right now what rules in these areas and territories are beasts. They're from the same regimes. Amen? Just because they don't wear the Egyptian hats. and I mean, we're, this place, is the world is ruled by Babylon and Egypt. Satan's kingdom, prince of power of air. But God is driving them out. He's driving them out through his body. And they're attempting to change right now times, laws, constitutions, and put in their own order. They're even trying to get it to where people can vote without an ID. They're trying to give money to the illegal immigrants in California. They want to give them a license who are not even citizens. Why? So they can buy their votes. See, they'd rather have us in this plague, fake plague, and I'm going to call it a fake plague because that's what it is. It's a fake plague. It's amazing how many people are still walking around and believing this stuff. They look like they just came out of surgery. So where are you going, man? What are you afraid of? You a Christian? It's amazing to me how many Christians are walking around with rubber gloves and masks. What happened to their faith? What happened to their standing on God's word? What happened? Fear grabbed hold of them. That's what happened. And they believed the lie of the devil. And the Babylonian empire and, and all of their prophets of Baal that are nothing but newscasters. And they're tending to change times, seasons, laws, and remove the Constitution and take our freedom away. You know, people were shooting a video with cell phones the other day in California. They were arresting citizens that were protesting. And they were showing them. And what are they protesting? Because they, you know, they were supposed to keep their distance. They got to be in the house. But the police that were arresting them didn't have any rubber gloves on or masks. And they were showing, they were going, look at what's going on. Our rights are being stolen. Well, let me tell you, if you're a Democrat out there, get off your butt and get rid of those people. And vote them out if you want freedom. Other than that, you're going to be sucked in to bondage yourself into slavery again. Hallelujah. It says they will tend to change times and laws and the saints shall be given into their hands. For a time and times and a half, there'll be about three and a half years. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion and consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, and his kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is a pre prelude of events leading to a prophetic moment where divine order will be infiltrated into the earth. It will be for time and seasons. The enemy will attempt to change everything and stop the flow of what God is doing. He'll stop to shut the portals. He'll try to stop the prophetic moments where divine order is being established on the earth. He's going to try and pre prevent you from receiving it in your heart and only holding it in your mind, because if you just hold it here, the enemy can steal it. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. Man, I got a lot of this stuff. Let's go to Joel 2. Glory! You think it's essential that we know these things? I believe the Spirit does. He's called the Spirit of Truth. <laughs> he brings us the all truth. 
He's preparing us. Listen, without preparations of expectations, people lose heart. That's called hope. Hope. It's future faith. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, and he says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy prophetic moments. And your old men shall dream dreams. And young men shall see visions. I'm glad I still see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is a prophetic moment that will happen. It was done at an acceptable time. It's called the Feast of Pentecost. And it's been going on ever since. Does everybody get it? He says, so in this we see that the, the acceptable time in a prophetic moment, God will shift the time and season into a cycle of a designated feast called the Feast of Pentecost to turn things upside down. The voice of reality will increase and will release a time of supernatural productivity. Is everybody with me? There will be a supernatural productivity. There will be a release of a time of supernatural productivity as Pentecost repeats itself in a prophetic moment. And this will be on the remnant. He will soak the seeds of righteousness, saturate them with his presence. We will be giving birth by creating open portals from heaven, and new wine and fresh oil of the anointing will be established. We will be going into a higher level. There will be a higher level of government on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. There will be a higher level, an advancement of the kingdom of God in Christ. There will be a supercharge. That's what we're calling mega. Mega. We are in a mega movement. The mega, it'll be a mega outpouring of the power of God Almighty with boldness. The anointing will bring in a new breed of Christianity. There will be a new breed of Christianity. We will be fulfilling what has been spoken about, about a generation that is after God's heart and worshipers. The rest will be on the side. They will miss. God has given opportunity to invitations. They'll either accept it or reject it. They'll be okay. And they'll be satisfied with what they own, the jobs they have, and all the other things, and they're going to lose them anyways. Oh, hallelujah. There'll be a new breed of, uh, breed of Christianity to change the course of the world, making history and unmasking evil, evil agendas. We'll be driving them out with a great awakening to the voice of reality. The voice of reality will be loud and clear. And those who hear his call will answer. And those who don't hear his call, there's nothing to answer to because they're hardened hearts. Hebrews 12. Oh, what a time to be alive. Hebrew 12. Hebrews 12. Man, if I did Hebrews 12, whew, I'd be like Hermione over the hedge. Glory. Anybody ever see that movie? It's great. I love it. We watched that the other night. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 25. Is everybody there? Anybody there? <laughs> Is everybody all right? Are you as excited as I am? Jeez. We're going to watch the power of God hit this earth. I can't wait that they're all arrested and get saved in jail. 
I'll even send them a prayer booklet. Verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape what ref who refused him who spoke on earth, hello, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken is of those things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. That's called remnant. Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence, respect, honor, and fear of the Lord, and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The great awakening comes with a great shaking. Prophetic moment of advancement. Remember, God's trying to advance us. The mega outpouring is coming with a high level of productivity, governing, unity, unmasking, and plundering of evil goods. Birthing of a new era. Acts 3. Battle, fight, resist, submit, and die to yourself. Acts chapter 3. Have you gone through a trial lately? If you haven't, you will. Trials are for advancement. If you're not going through them, you ain't going, you're not advancing. Have you been chased and rebuked? The Lord chastens those he loves. To do what? Correct. Too many people run. Hallelujah. Where did I say to go? Acts 3. Thank you. Verse 17. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did not, you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets to bring a prophetic moment, which was bringing Christ in, that the Christ would suffer, he thus has fulfilled. Repent. Turn away. Therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that you don't miss the times of refreshing may come from the presence of God and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you beforehand, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Wow. Repent and be refreshed in his presence. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 2. Prophetic moments. First Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. How many of you know everything is recorded? Everything is in heaven. So when you get before the Lord, it's all in the book. See, you may be going, well, Lord, why didn't you answer me? You said, well, I was on the phone. Well, Lord, why didn't you answer me? Well, I decided to sleep. Well, Lord, why didn't you answer me? Because you refused to worship me. See, what you sow is what you reap. First Peter chapter 2. You know, he says, you want me to acknowledge you, but you, but you won't acknowledge me. Verse 1, therefore laying aside all stupidity, malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, 
as living stones are building up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. What does a priest do? He ministers to the Lord. Again, if you can't minister to the Lord, you got no right minister to nobody else. That's what's called priesthood. And you can't become a king or a warrior unless you fulfill priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable God, to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. You are a chosen generation, a royal priest of a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now you are a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. There, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to a king or supreme or governors or those who are sent by him for punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do good. Now, he's saying submit to the righteous positions. He's not saying submit to the unrighteous positions. Does everybody get it? He says pray for them. Hopefully to remove them. Amen. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants to God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear the God, and honor the king. That's fear the Lord. Amen? Prophetic moments, we are in it. And we will see more and more prophetic moments being released because there are acceptable times that we're in also. And a new era. Get ready. Get ready. It's coming. And don't miss it because the enemy is going to come strong to try and get you out of position. He always likes to get you to a place where he'll distract you. Amen? He'll distract you. Do you ever try to catch a ball and somebody calls your name, you turn your head and hit you in the head? You know, they do that in football. The guy who's trying to catch a pass, you go up and scream at him. Yeah. That's what the devil does. He tries to distract you so you miss what God's doing. Amen? Divine appointments come through prophetic moments also. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you seal this word with the blood of Christ in the anointing so it grows and bears fruit for your glory. And we promise to give you the glory in Jesus' name.